I'm Mark Cavanaugh for Cavi Coaches, and today I'm going to coach you up on Newton's second law for rotation involving torque, rotational inertia, and angular acceleration. All right, in this video, we're going to talk about Newton's second law for torques. We're also going to use some translation on Newton's second law, F equals MA, back where we learned forces. In this video, we're going to start with torque, angular acceleration, and rotational inertia, and how that relates to Newton's second law. So you may remember this slide from our previous video on deri deriving the equation for rotational inertia. So we can see at that bottom line, that the, we derived the rotational inertia as just the sum of the individual masses times the individual radii squared. But within this slide, we actually have Newton's second law. Newton's second law is, for torques is net torque divided by the angular acceleration equals the rotational inertia. This is a form of Newton's second law. The way that you're going to see it on the AP Physics 1 formula sheet, though, is angular acceleration equals net torque divided by the rotational inertia. Now, the way that we're going to use it is much like Newton's second law, where we wrote F equals M times A. We're going to write net torque equals alpha times I. So the angular acceleration times the rotational inertia is equal to the net torque. So we have this disk that has a force that's applied at the right edge, causing it to rotate from rest, so it's angularly accelerating. The disk has a radius of R and a mass of M. And our question is to write an expression for the angular acceleration of the disk in terms of ft, m, and r. So what we're going to do is we know that this has an angular acceleration. We have a rotational inertia. The disk has a rotational inertia equation of 1 half mr squared. So we're going to substitute that in for i, 1 half mr squared, using capital M and capital R as the symbols that were given to us. Now we have to turn the tension force into a torque, and this is where students make mistakes a lot, is we forget to turn forces into torques. We can take a force and turn it into a torque by multiplying by the radius. So we get FTR equals alpha times the rotational inertia of the disk. Now we can see that we have R's on both sides, so we can cancel out the R with the tension force and one of them with the, in the rotational inertia equation. Cleaning that up, we have FT equals one half alpha MR, and then we can solve for alpha by just multiplying by 2 and then dividing by mr. And we get angular acceleration is going to be 2 times the tension force divided by the mass times the radius. All right, so let's look at an example for Newton's second law for rotation. So we have a system consisting of two blocks and a pulley. The pulley has 0.5 kilogram mass and a 0.1 meter radius. So this is different than problems we've done before. Before we had mass, a massless pulley or an ideal pulley where the mass did not have to be taken into account and we knew that the tension force between the two blocks was equal. Now that is not going to be the case in this because the mass of the pulley has to be taken into account. If the mass of the pulley is taken into account, then we also know that the mass of the, or the pulley is accelerating as well. So uh, we know that the block on the table will accelerate to the right because the surface is frictionless. So part A is going to ask us to compare the values of tension force T1 and tension force T2. FT1 is the force that is parallel to the table and pulling the block on the table, and FT2 is the one that is pulling the hanger up. So what we're going to do is we're going to blow the pulley up again. We're going to draw a force diagram for the pulley. So we know that FT2 on the pulley is going to be pulling downward on that pulley. And we know that the tension force 1, since it's pulling the block to the right, would be pulling the pulley back to the left. Now, you can see that I drew FT2 larger than FT1, and we'll explain why that is. Now, if the system has no friction, then we know it's going to accelerate. And if it's going to accelerate, that means the block on the table accelerates to the right, the hanger is going to accelerate downward, which means that the pulley is going to accelerate clockwise. So it's going to spin clockwise and have an angular acceleration in the clockwise direction. Well, if it has an angular acceleration in the clockwise direction, what that means 
is that the clockwise torque has to be greater than the counterclockwise torque, which is why I drew FT2 to be longer than FT1. So answering the question, FT2 is greater than FT1, and that's because they're at the same distance or at the same um, radius from the edge, from the center of that pulley. So FT2 is greater than FT1, so we know that the pulley can accelerate with unbalanced torque, so it has an angular acceleration. Let's answer a second question. Let's find the value of the acceleration of the block on the table. Now this is kind of tricky. You're asked to find the acceleration of the block on the table. Well, that's also the acceleration of the hanger, but that's also the tangential acceleration of the outermost edge of the pulley as well. So they all have the same acceleration because it's accelerating together as a system. So all three masses are going to have the same acceleration, the pulley being the outermost edge. Step one is to draw free body diagrams. So if you don't remember how to draw free body diagrams, check the link out above and you can go back to that video on system schema and free body diagrams because we're just going to draw the free body diagrams rather quickly. So we have the block and the hanger, and we have these three forces that are acting on the block. And we have the two forces that act on the hanger that are unbalanced as the hanger is accelerating downward. The block has an unbalanced force to the right for T1, so that means the block would accelerate to the right. All right, so we're going to take our free body diagrams, and we're going to do what we did back when we learned forces, and that's right, Newton's second law equations. But first, we have a third object that has mass, that we've already drawn a force diagram for. So we're going to bring that back in as well and write a Newton's second law equation for torques. So we write our generic equations from our formula sheet, F equals MA for the block and the hanger, and net torque equals I alpha for the pulley. Now looking at each individual object, starting with the block, the block's accelerating only to the right, so we don't have to write a net force equation for the block in the vertical direction, only in the horizontal direction. So we can write that FT1 is going to equal the mass of the block times the translational acceleration of the block, which remember, they're all the same. The hanger, FGH minus FT2, remember it's the bigger force minus the smaller force. That's going to give you the equation. So we just change gravity to MHG minus FT2, and that's going to equal the mass of the hanger times its acceleration, which is also the same as the block. Now here's where it gets a little tricky is writing the equation for the pulley. So we have to remember to turn forces into torques. I can't say that enough. Turn forces into torques by multiplying by the radius at which the force is acting from the point of rotation. So we can turn FT2 into a torque by multiplying by the radius and FT1 into a torque by multiplying by the same radius since they are both acting at the edge of the pulley. And then write a subscript of D on the rotational inertia for I because that is the rotational inertia of a disk, which is one half mR squared. So we can take that equation and we can substitute it into our torque equation. And you can see this is starting to get a little bit messy. Now we have this angular acceleration value, but we also know that the angular acceleration times the radius is equal to that tangential acceleration, the acceleration the outermost edge. So we can solve for that angular acceleration. So that tangential acceleration divided by the radius is equal to that angular acceleration. And remember, the tangential acceleration is the acceleration of the outermost edge of the pulley, which is the same as each of our accelerations for the block and hanger. So we can substitute A over R into alpha. Now, we've got a big, messy equation, but let's see if we can't clean this up a bit. So on the right side, we have an R in the numerator, R squared and an r in the denominator. So one of those r's is going to cancel out with the one in the denominator. Now if we look through our terms, we, every term has an r, both terms on the left side and one on the right. So we can cancel out the r's from each equation. And if we clean that up, rewriting it, it looks just like a Newton's second law equation, ft2 minus ft1, except for we've got the fraction one half mass of the pulley times the acceleration. And we know that all three accelerations are the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these systems of equations. We have three equations to solve for an expression for our acceleration. Well, what we don't know the tension forces, so we're going to solve for the tension forces. So the block, we've already solved for the tension force, Ft1 equals mv times a. 
and then we're going to use the Hanger equation and solve for Ft2, and we get MHG minus MHA. So now we're going to substitute those into our torque equation. So we'll let's bring the torque equation back to the middle over here, and we're going to substitute Ft1, which is just MBA, and that's subtracted in our torque equation. And then we're going to substitute Ft2, which is just MHG minus MHA. So we substitute it, and we have this big, long equation. But now we're going to clean it up a bit. So we're trying to solve for the acceleration. And we've got three terms that have A in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some algebra, and we're going to collect all of our terms that have A's on one side of our equation. So we're going to add MHA and add MBA to the other side. And now we have three terms that have acceleration in it. And now we can do some algebra and we can factor out that A. So we get MHG is equal to, in parentheses, all the masses added together, half of the mass of the pulley, times the acceleration. And remember, we can do this because all three objects have the same acceleration, the pulley's tangential acceleration on its outermost edge. So now we solve for the acceleration and we get this expression to represent the acceleration. Well, once we have that expression, it's just in terms of masses and constants. So we can substitute our values in for the masses and get an acceleration of 2.1 meters per second squared, which means the block in the table has that acceleration, the hanger has that acceleration, and the outermost edge of the pulley also has that acceleration. So the third question is, let's find the tension in each section of the string. Well, we know that the tensions are going to be different, and we actually already derived equations for those tension forces when we were deriving our equation for acceleration. So we go back to those, and we can see that Ft1 equals MBA, and Ft2 equals MHG minus MHA. So all we have to do now is just substitute the mass and the acceleration of 2.1 meters per second in for Ft1, and we can get that Ft1 is going to equal a value of 5.25 newtons. Now we can do the same thing for Ft2, substituting the mass, the g value, and acceleration, and get that Ft2 is equal to 5.78 newtons. And we compared these in part A that Ft2 should be bigger than Ft1, and as we can look, we know that Ft2, 5.78 newtons, is a larger number than 5.25 newtons. All right, so that was a lot to go through. So let's recap finding the acceleration first. So the first thing we did is we drew free body diagrams for the translationally moving objects, the hanger and the block, and we drew a force diagram for the rotationally moving object that had an angular acceleration. We wrote our Newton's second law equations, F equals MA for our block and hanger, and net torque equals I alpha for our pulley. Then we wrote our individual equations for each, doing bigger minus smaller for forces or bigger minus smaller for torques, and set that equal to m times a or i times alpha. And we know that for our torque equation, it was a disk. We substituted the rotational inertia equation for a disk. Then we know that we substitute alpha times r equals a. If we rearrange that, we can solve for alpha is equal to a divided by r and we can substitute that in, then we know that each of those accelerations is equal, the tangential acceleration on the outermost edge of the pulley, as well as the translational acceleration of the block in the hanger. Now looking at our equation, we know we can cancel out the r with the r squared, and then all of the terms have r's, giving us our equation for our net torque ends up being like a net force equation. Then we solved each of the block and the hanger for Ft1 and Ft2, substituted those values in for Ft1 and Ft2. Then after we did that, we cleaned up our equation by collecting all of our acceleration terms on one side by adding them. Then we factored out the value of the acceleration since all three of those accelerations are the same. We solved for an expression for our acceleration. Then we can plug the numbers in and then we solved for the acceleration to get 2.1 meters per second squared.
to recap finding the tension forces, then it's just taking those equations we derived for the block and the hanger in terms of FT1 and FT2, solving for FT1 by plugging mass in the acceleration, solving for FT2 by plugging in mass G in the acceleration, and then we compared those values to see that yes, we our answer for part A was correct, FT2 is greater than FT1. So this is an introduction to torque and Newton's second law using rotational inertia, angular acceleration. We also use some net force equals MA. I hope this was helpful and I hope you have a great day and an even better tomorrow. If you found this video helpful, click the like button down below and subscribe to my channel, Abby Coaches, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Abby Coaches.